All right, so here, uh, continuing on in 4.2, I want to go over the unit circle. Uh, all the results I end up finishing up in here, you're going to need to memorize. You, you, need, you have to have this down. Either you need to memorize it or you need to do what I'm saying, which is basically following patterns to be able to fill this out. But you should be able to fill this out. Now, I've already gone ahead and filled out the values for the angles that I talked about in a previous video, I think in Lecture 3 of 4.1. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's where it was. Uh, so go watch that again to see how I came up with all of these, but I basically counted around the circle in radians and counted around in degrees and was able to fill this out. Now what we want to do is paying attention to what we just did on that last video at the end where we found those special cases at 30, 45, and 60 degrees, the pi over 6, the pi over 4, and the pi over 3 values. Uh, we want to chart filling this out. So the nice thing about this is you really only have to memorize three numbers to get these ones, uh, to get these off-angle ones, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's look at uh, the ones I wrote in red. Your 0 degrees, your 90 degrees, your 180 degrees, your 270, and your 360, which is correspondingly 0 radians, 90, or pi over 2 radians, pi radians, and 3 pi over 2 radians, and then 2 pi radians, which again, from that last video, you can just count that around. So let's look at these coordinates. Well, this point right here has to be the point 1, 0. We are at 1 in x, and we're not moved up or down in y. We're on the x-axis there, so 1, 0. This point up here at pi over 2 is going to be the point 0, 1. We're up 1 on y, we're on the y-axis, which means we're not anywhere on the x-axis, we're at the point 0, 1. We come around to this point over here at pi, or 180 degrees, and we're at the point negative 1 on x, and we're 0 on y, because again, we're on the x-axis. And then this last one down here uh, is going to be the point 0, and then negative 1 on y because we're on the y-axis, which means x is 0, and we're down here in the negative part. We're down negative 1, because this whole radius is 1. So that's where we are. Now, to get all these other points, like I said before, you really only need to remember three numbers. Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and 1 half. If you can remember those three numbers and the pattern, you're going to be good. So first, let's look at the 45 degrees or the pi over 4 ones. All of those are going to be some sort of root 2 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2. And then to get the other ones, all you really need to do, because if you notice, these are right straight across. So that means they're going to have the same exact y value. They're level with each other. And then if you look at the x values, they're just as far. It's just one has a negative version of that x value, and the other one has the positive version of that x value. So, keeping that in mind, this is 45, then 90, and then 135. So this is our basically our 45 right between. In other words, what we're going to do is just kind of mirror each of the quadrants over, right? We have our four quadrants here. And so if we can remember quadrant one, we just have to mirror an image over here except here, all the x values are negative. So instead of square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, it is negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, because the y values are positive. Now looking down here, directly below it, is our next point for this. Okay, That point right there, that's another one of these 45 degrees. It's right in between, but here in quadrant 3. And this is not going to be square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. It's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. Because over in quadrant 3, both x values and y values are negative. We can then go over here to our next 45 degree point, right here, right down the middle in quadrant 4. And this is going to be uh, positive again for x, because we're right over here under the positive x value now but it's still negative for y. So this will be square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. So, so far, just by knowing this one right here and the one number, square root of 2 over 2, uh, we were able to fill out then all 
four of those points going around for the, the angles that are right halfway between the axes at 45 degrees. Uh, next one we can look at is the pi over 6 or 30 degree ones. For these, it's going to be square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. And if you look straight across from there, it gives us the 5 pi over 6. It's right in line with it, which means it's going to have the same things, the square root of 3 over 2 and the 1 half. It's just that in this quadrant, the x values are negative. So negative square root of 3 over 2. See if I can write that a little more clearly. Negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. We can then move straight down to the 7 pi over 6 here. And at the 7 pi over 6 value, I'm doing this in the wrong color, I just realized. Sorry about that. I meant to do it in that, that hot pink color. But we're going to, again, have square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. This time in this quadrant, they are both negative. Negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And then we can move straight across again over to here where we'll have this point, which again, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, but this time the x is back to being positive and the y is negative in that quadrant. All right, so that's that point. And let's do the very last one, the 60 degree ones. This is going to again have the same values, 1 half and square root of 3 over 2 except this time 1 half is the x value and square root of 3 over 2 is the y value. Now before I start going around, uh, that's something I see students mess up quite a lot. So whenever I'm taking a test, I tend to just sketch this out real quick by hand, and even real quick by hand, if I look at this, I'm looking here at the x value, right? The x value. Now, if I just sketch real quick, a 45 degree line, like halfway between. So I, let's say I just do this. I do, here's my unit circle. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna sketch my 45 degree line and then I'm gonna have a 60 right above it and a 30 right below it. Even if just doing that, I'm gonna zoom in on this real quick. Even just doing this rough little picture, if I draw this down, here's the X value for 30 degrees, right? This was the 30 degrees one. That's way more than a half, right? Right here is where one is. That's way more than half. But if I look at the 60 degree mark right here, and I draw a line straight down, look at that. I'm right in between zero and one on that line, right? Right on this line, I'm halfway between it. That's the one that's gonna have the one half for the X value and the square root of three over two for the Y value, which means the 30 degree one is flip-flop, square root of three over two and then a one half. And you can also even look at this in the y value. If I come across here on the y value, that's way past a half, so that gets the square root of 3 over 2. But on this one, look at this. I come across, and I'm right in the middle between 0 and 1, right on this line. And that means that this one has the y value of 1 half, which is what we have right there. So even just a quick sketch can help you remember or figure out which way was which. And you can just kind of decide then, okay, well, you know, look, when I draw this straight down, I am right halfway down the line from here to here. All right, that one has the one half. That means the x value is one half there. Now it's just a matter of mirroring this over. So I can come straight across to this point right there. And when I do that, I'm gonna have again a one half and a square root of three over two but this time the one half is negative because it's we're on the negative side of the x uh, of the negative side of the x axis there and then i can mirror straight down to this one which is going to give me uh, again one half and square root of 3 over 2 but this time they're both going to be negative because x and y are negative there and then come over here do it one last time our x value is back to being positive but we have negative square root of 3 over two there for that. So make sure that you can fill this out, you know, go back, slow it down, watch this whole uh, lecture again, but make sure that you can fill this out. And again, if, as long as you can get these three points over here memorized, these ones over here memorized, you can just extend it out by counting around and changing signs and stuff like that to fill out the rest of this. 
but you definitely should be capable of fully figuring this out. And I can tell you, even to this day, uh, I will often sketch myself a little unit circle like that whenever I start working on these kinds of problems to make sure I get everything lined up right and can fill it out. Okay, so uh, go sh through and look at that. And then down here at the bottom, this is just about that symmetries I was talking about where we went straight across and we were having uh, the coordinates end up be the same but with different signs. All right, we could go straight through here and straight across here and even straight across this way. Square root is a 2 over 2, square root is a 2 over 2. All right, so take a look at some of those symmetries you see right there uh, for different angles that are occurring. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.